Good morning, everyone. A couple of pictures for you just to consider. So I can see that. Are you feeling more like Sun Tzu, some sort of Chinese general or warrior, or are you the Scottish Terrier? So um, independent, very kind with children, or a little bit stubborn. Um, I'll say a little bit about myself while you consider that choice. Um, I'm a deputy head teacher at a large secondary school with a rural community, just very mixed. And although our school is probably very different to your situation, we are much normal. We have a whole range of abilities. Um, we have a whole range of challenges that, that every school has faced in the last few months. And I think if you came to visit us, you might be surprised actually how little kind of visible technology there is. So we're very much traditional in the way that we approach teaching and learning. But to build on things that Dave said, we see the real value in kind of technology for, for supporting workload and for staff. And listening to Kelly as well, just about the importance of staff development and thinking that through. So it's hard for me to really pitch this to know what your role in school is. But if I start with a Sun Tzu, I suppose the purpose of this 10 minutes is really to help you think about the challenge that September poses, as well as the opportunity. Um, so the, the, the quite horrifying thought is that if we are subjected to schools or colleges closing again, um, what does learning then look like? Because we've had a really difficult four months of having to adapt and learn and adjust things. Um, you're welcome to follow that link. Um, if you do type that in bit.ly, edtech, hyphen scotty, just use it in lowercase. But there's some references there to some government guidance on, on plans for reopening in September. And section five towards the end of that is very much about having a contingency plan for being able to pivot to online learning should you need to. So depending on how you set up your college or your school, that could look very different. It might be sending a class home. It might, in the worst circumstance, be sending a year group home. And it's that real challenge of how do we make sure that the experience we've had in the last few months is something that we can then build on. So this is the idea of a contingency plan. So you'll see Sun Tzu says, to not prepare is the greatest of crimes, to be prepared beforehand for any contingency is the greatest of virtues. And, and if you're listening to this and you're a leader, then it's just that encouragement to, to, to put some of that time and thought into um, what does it look like should we need to move back to a position uh, of learning online? I suppose a really good contingency plan is something you hope you never need to use. So often some of the thought and the work actually you put in is never something you sort of take out of your back pocket. But the other benefit to it is, is, is there a way that that contingency planning for September can be the start of a longer term strategy? At the start, Bob mentioned one of the aims of the program is to, is, is to be able to have a legacy of a change in use of technology across schools and colleges. So as you consider some of the contingency planning and reflecting on the last four months, what is it within that that is something that can build a longer term impact? So one benefit maybe of a contingency plan is to help you reflect on a number of aspects. And um, I don't have a great memory, um, so often a user of Google Keep to record things, take photos of things I've scribbled on paper. Um, so a mnemonic for me is really, really helpful. So this Scottish dog, this Scottish terrier, um, independent, stubborn, often very friendly, um, has helped me focus in our context of things we need to consider, not just for September, but for an ongoing strategy. So this is very much forward looking. Um, and I suppose the first point there is staff. Um, it, it, it does make you smile. I've probably got my arms folded now, haven't I? I should be much more open about this. But when you think about staff in your, in your setting, they are so varied, aren't they? Um, so, and it's often quite difficult to, to, to relate technology use to their different subjects, the different stage of career, um, the different ways that they like to approach their subject. Um, but having staff at the heart of what you do is really powerful. So if you are gonna consider making better use of technology, it's the staff that are the real key linchpin in that, that actually you can have the best technology available, you can have students and families that are engaged and ready to learn, but if you don't have the human, at the heart of that Zoom or that Meet or that Teams call, then actually the technology can, can feel very cold. Um, so we do make good use of tools like Seneca, um, where they, they talk about having artificial intelligence behind it to help you picture kind of what's coming next. But actually without an adult, whether that's at home or in school, who can kind of reward and praise the use of that, some of these technology ideas can fall very flat. So just consider kind of what the pressures are on your staff, what the experiences of your staff, where their, as Kelly said, their appetite is. Have you got that group of staff that are saying, 
yes, I'd like to learn more, I'd like to make better use of that. Consider your PD, so your professional development of staff. I, I, again, I love what Kelly said about the fact you don't want to overburden them and have them all pick different tools. Keep it really simple. Um, it has been a real benefit, hasn't it, to, to, to have maybe for some people a little bit more time to then communicate in a wider network than just their school. Um, so again, being able to connect to webinars like this, the London Grid for Learning, EdTech Demonstrator Schools, maybe within your trust, try to build on that ability to communicate in a wider network. But again, as we've mentioned, um, it's the human aspect of the CPD. Don't expect people to be spending most of their CPD time, on time um, online looking at a screen like this. Encourage them to have the conversation like you've been doing in the chat, like you maybe do on Twitter. Communication is really key. Um, one thing to bear in mind for September is communication with your learners and their families. Um, because, one, um, the, it, it, because one challenge might be, if an environment where you do have students that they are testing positive for the coronavirus, then it's about making sure that if you're quickly moving to home learning, you've done the communication in advance. And that can be really, really simple. So it's just making sure that you've got the ability to have your online learning environments either pre-set up or activated very quickly. It's about making sure that the reminders that you've given already about having um, access to technology, about having a quiet environment, having those motivating factors to help you keep Pacer in place. So communicate ahead of time. Try to view this as an ongoing change. Um, there will be subjects and courses and opportunities to, to make sure that that home learning is supported by technology. So don't just view your contingency plan as a one-off event that you're gonna put in place in September. Keep teaching at the heart of what you're doing. So uh, we, we've heard it said as well, haven't we, about that purposeful practice, about understanding the power of feedback within your classrooms, making sure that the teaching and how you're aiding the students' learning is at the heart of the use of technology. Access to technology, um, again, consider uh, uh, how your different communities are embracing that. Um, we'll maybe share a few links in a moment in the chat, but there are programs that enable either access to devices, um, whether that's increased use of, um, of, of data rates on mobile phones. Um, there's a pilot out there at the moment where you can actually get voucher codes, which then you can pass on to families. And what this does, if there's a known mobile phone number and there's a particular need in there, then what you can do, you can increase their data allowance. So that's a pilot that's happening over the summer and there'll be more information whether that's successful or not. It might be about the um, BT hotspots, access to vouchers, that again, maybe typically for older learners, sometimes the home isn't the best place to do that learning. It might actually be that there's places that they need to go to, whether that's a library, whether that's after school provision to enable that. So think about access to technology because um, that challenge hasn't gone away for families. And the final one, I wonder if I should change that to the yet, as Kelly said. So what don't we know yet? It can equally be why. Remember why we're doing this, um, to meet our strategic aims and support our learners. Sometimes it can be a yes, and don't be afraid to say no as well. So sometimes the best answer you can give to somebody is actually that no, not yet. Some of the ideas, some of the tools that come so quickly, if they're not well thought through, although they might look like a good idea, can actually cause more work more challenges, more pressures. So um, the real simple encouragement is, have a contingency plan for September, but as you consider what that might mean, look for the opportunities that lead you into a longer strategic plan. Okay, thank you, back to Bob. Thank you, Chris. Uh, very, very insightful there. We've talked about strategy, thinking in the longer term. One of the things that I've spoken to many, many senior leaders in recent weeks is looking at trying to get people not to look in in such a compartmentalized way at the problems that you're trying to solve it's very easy to think right we need a contingency plan but what i hope is coming through is that you hear from people like david at couples sandringham and harlow that embedded use of technology actually with a holistic vision careful mm -hmm. implementation allows you to tackle all of these different challenges in different ways but as Chris says, staff are key, the human element, thinking carefully about what's the effective use of time and of course technology, not used for the sake of it and keeping that teaching at the heart of it all. And if only we had more time, Chris, because you were straying into talking about all of the aspects of learning outside of school as well. 